What would happen if one day all of humanity vanished and everything was buried under sand and stone? When insects grow massive thanks to a favorable climate and become the top dogs in the food chain, known for their hard-working nature and a smart social structure rivaling primitive humans, can the Mesor laboriosus ants survive in such a world? In the next 100 days, starting from a lone queen, what will they do with our world? Build nests, hunt prey, grow, and fight off dangerous enemies. It's gonna be a brutal yet thrilling journey. Will they make it? Come explore with me. Welcome back to Ant Trek. Day one, I ordered these guys all the way from Malaysia. Say hello to the queen of the ap Oh my God, I didn't even touch it. Luckily, our queen is still healthy and unharmed. Hayes, can't expect anything from human. To make up for it, I'm going to move the queen into a brand new test tube. Oh, I almost forgot about these little angels here. No time to waste. I moved them all into the new test tube right away. Watching the queen struggle to carry her eggs back honestly makes me feel so guilty. If I hadn't broken the test tube, she probably wouldn't have to work this hard. Our journey starts with a lone queen and these eggs about to hatch. After a few days, those first eggs have hatched into strong, chubby larvae. The number of eggs and larvae just keeps growing. Day by day, the eggs and larvae grew bigger. The larvae quickly grew and became cocoons. And by day 10, you could clearly see their faces. Day 20. The first batch of worker ants is born. Normally, it takes 40 to 45 days for an egg to become a young worker. Our queen must have laid these eggs during her journey here. The sole purpose of a worker ant from the moment it's born is to serve and care for the queen and her tiny offspring. Sweet honey packed with glucose and fructose is perfect for fueling both the larvae and the queen. Mom, she fell! <laughs> what should I do? Help! Help me! They looked pretty desperate, so I decided to be the good guy and rescue the ants drowning in the honey. Hmm, it looks like this little ant is quite greedy. Day 30. The second batch of workers is here, and now we've got eight worker ants in total. Small worker ants are about four to five millimeters, growing to seven to eight millimeters when fully mature. I'll give them a bit of protein so the larvae and eggs can grow faster. Look at that. They're using their powerful jaws to tear the prey apart, piece by piece. Day 40. After 40 days, the colony has exploded in growth thanks to the abundant food I've provided. We now have 20 workers and, get this, the first three soldier ants are born. Mesor laboriosus only produces soldiers when food is plentiful and the environment is stable. I've been taking good care of them, haven't I? But it looks like this place is running out of space for my ant colony. I'm gonna build them a new home. Here! Any guesses what's inside? My God! My beautiful Statue of Liberty. Why have you become like this? A new world or a world of doom. When the environment shifts, oxygen levels spike and conditions turn favorable. These ants, with their human-like social order, could grow gigantic. Could any creature stand a chance against ants the size of cars? How will they react to this brand new habitat?
Worker ants immediately scout the area to ensure it's safe for the queen, her larvae, and her eggs. Once everything's secure, our apocalyptic queen will find the perfect spot to build a nest and hide. I designed this new home specifically for Messer Laboriosus. They're gonna love it! Day 50. Once they find a suitable spot, they waste no time digging in. The nest must be built quickly. Out here on the surface, countless dangers threaten both the queen and her brood. As time passes, this desolate land begins to reveal its secrets. Hidden enemies lurk in the shadows, waiting for their chance to strike. But in this post-apocalyptic world, predators are always lurking. These master hunters have grown gigantic and more dangerous than ever. The weather, harsh and constantly changing, they need to dig a nest ASAP to keep the larvae and eggs safe. Day 70. I call them genius architects because their nests aren't too deep, but are crazily well designed. Their nests always have fake entrances to trick enemies. The underground nest area consists of five primary zones, the food larder, cookhouse, refuse chamber, larvae repository, and the queen's dwelling. With such a rich stockpile of seeds, our larvae and eggs have all the nutrition they need to grow and thrive. In just a few days, they'll hatch and mature into hard-working worker ants. Oh, I just remembered, I only gave them one fly while they were still in the test tube. Yet somehow, they managed to hunt down another one on their own. True apex predators, no doubt about it. Air hunting skills are impressive. But what happens when their nest is under attack? How will they respond? There's no escape. Soldier ants, bigger, with jaws of steel, will fight to the death to protect their queen and larvae. Ew! That's disgusting! Oh my god, what is that? They're stuffing the larvae inside that poor cockroach. I mean, I knew the larvae could eat, but this way of eating? That's beyond anything I could have imagined. Ew! That's disgusting! Every intruder becomes a feast, packing protein to help the queen lay more eggs. Day 80. But remember, in nature, danger doesn't only come from predators. Sometimes nature itself is the deadliest threat of all. In this tiny world, sandstorms wiped out humanity. Will history repeat itself with these ants? With winds this strong, pheromones are useless. The ants are totally disoriented, desperately clinging to the ground to avoid being blown away. Even those high up get swept away fast. The higher they are, the stronger the winds. Lower down isn't much better. Even in buildings or on this statue, they're fighting with all their strength not to get swept away. Day 90. Even after the sandstorm, danger still lurked for the ants. Can you guess this creature? It's an ant lion, a notorious desert predator. They lurk hidden in the sand, ambushing unsuspecting prey. And it looks like our ants are letting their guard down, completely oblivious to their surroundings. Oh no! An unlucky little ant couldn't escape the clutches of death. I wonder if the ant colony will survive until day 100. Day 100. Messor Laboriosus is so organized, yet in nature, they've still got rivals and deadly predators. A martial arts master, the ultimate predator among insects. Can you guess what it is? Can these peaceful, hardworking ants stand up to that master hunter? Praying mantises are deadly hunters with an 85% success rate, a number that terrifies any lone prey. But ants use numbers, discipline, and unity to overwhelm enemies. Can the mantis hold its own? With smart tactics and guerrilla-style attacks, 
The mantis chips away at the ant colony's forces. With those sharp claws, the death of that poor ant is inevitable. But that's when they're alone. When the ants are together, it's a whole different story. The mantis is slowly getting surrounded and cornered. Guerrilla tactics? Useless now. It's a head-on battle now, just raw power and instincts between these two species. No strategy left, but the mantis is still strong enough to break the encirclement. The ants are losing ground. Numbers don't matter against this deadly foe anymore. When things spiral out of control, they release pheromones to call in the real warriors to defend the nest. The colonies fired up, unleashing their greatest strength. The mantis is now totally overwhelmed, barely able to fight back. Instinct screams that this colony is not something it can handle. Even a top-tier predator can't mess with this colony. Strategy and brains are no match for overwhelming power. Check out this video for more, and I'll see you in the next one.